Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Anton Warnchuk in Baltimore. A recent study published in the scientific journal Nature argues that current global dietary trends are set to have a massive impact on global greenhouse gas emissions. The authors of the study, titled Global Diets Link Environmental Sustainability and Human Health, say the contribution of agriculture to global greenhouse gas emissions will increase by 80% over the next four decades, along with its associated health problems of diabetes and coronary heart disease. However, they also write, quote, there would be no net increase in food production emissions if, by 2050, the global diet had become the average of the Mediterranean, pescatarian, and vegetarian diets. Our next guests say, however, if you ask the nation's leading environmental organizations about the link between climate change and animal agriculture, well, their answers are conspicuously absent. Joining us from San Francisco to discuss the impacts of animal agriculture on the global environment are Kip Anderson and Keegan Kuhn. Kip and Keegan are the co-producers of the documentary film Cowspiracy, which came out this summer, is being released on DVD this month, and is currently available for streaming on their website. Kip is an award-winning designer, documentary filmmaker, and entrepreneur who's built more than a dozen businesses. And Keegan is an award-winning documentary filmmaker, videographer, and professional musician. Thank you both for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. So Kip, let's start with you. What inspired you to make a film about animal agriculture and its contributions to greenhouse gas emissions? Well, I thought I was doing everything I could to help the environment, driving less, riding bike, um, you know, taking short showers. And then I found out a UN report study that uh, our diet and raising animals for food, livestock creates more human-caused greenhouse gases than all the transportation put together. And then that led me on a journey of discovering that not only that, but uh, this one industry is the leading cause of rainforest destruction, water consumption, water pollution, ocean dead zones, species extinction, and basically across the board. And then to find out that our uh, world's leading environmental organizations, Greenpeace, Sierra Club, Oceana, all these groups, they don't mention this anywhere. And it seemed, if, if anything, they might have been covering it up. Well, let's get some statistics about some of the stuff like Keegan, like how, how do the greenhouse gas emissions of animal agricultural, uh, agriculture compare to, to other issues that are often um, a target of environmental campaigns, such as, uh, as transportation and fracking? Yeah, so the transportation makes up globally about 13% of all human-caused greenhouse gas emissions versus animal agriculture, as Kip just mentioned in the UN report from 2006, it makes up 18%. But there are statistics that go all the way up to 51% of all human-caused greenhouse gas emissions actually come from animal agriculture. Uh, depending on where that figure is, it is still a, an unacceptable level in our atmosphere. You know, fracking is an issue that gets a lot of attention because of water use um, and methane emissions, but fracking makes up about one-third of all methane emissions into the atmosphere versus animal agriculture, which makes up over one-third uh, just from methane. And methane is 86 times more potent of a greenhouse gas emission than carbon dioxide from, for example, you know, burning fossil fuels. Okay, and, and as I just mentioned, both of you are the co-producers of uh, the new documentary film, Cowspiracy. Let's take a look uh, at an interview you did in the film where you asked the, con the conservation director of the Sierra Club about this issue of agri animal agriculture and its contributions to climate change. Let's take a look. And what about, what about livestock and animal agriculture? Uh, well, what about it? I mean, uh, we do, you want to do it just research. We a couple of the UN report says it's more livestock accounts for more than all transportation put together. A recent 2009 World Watch report livestock causes 51% of all greenhouse emission gas emissions. Yeah, well, um, it is a big issue and we uh, need to address that as well. But, you know, there's just so many different potential sources of <coughs> methane and carbon emissions. If the number one leading cause is animal agriculture and meat consumption, then does not that need to be the number one focus, if not the number two? Well, that's your assessment. Our assessment is different. <laughs> Kip, what do you think is the significance of this moment in your film? Well, it just shows the, um, you know, it's a combination of ignorance and evasiveness. Um, and it's, it's really funny that if it wasn't so serious, the different interviews, how, um, how the entire interview changes once we mention animal agriculture. And we give them a huge opportunity to mention this because it's a film about sustainability. 
But once this gets brought up, because they never bring it up, then their their story kind of changes, their body language, the way they talk, everything just alters. And some, and it ranges from ignorance to straight up covering it up to not wanting to talk about it across the board. And every interview is very different, but quite entertaining, but quite disturbing as well. Well, explain that. Why why is there ignorance about this issue within these major environmental uh, organizations? And why is there also this attempt to cover it up? Well, one of them is, um, you know, that it's just not talked about. You know, the the major media sources, it's not talked about. But for the heads of these organizations, that's not really an excuse. A simple Google search can can discover most of these uh, these facts that you see in the film. Uh, a big reason of it is that they just don't see sharing this information with the public as a quote unquote win campaign. They don't see it as generating more money for them, more donors for them. So they just would rather, as we call it, profits over planet. And then another, um, another reason for it is uh, their, their own habits, their own habits among the, the, the highest of these groups, what their eating habits are. You know, they are eating animal products. And then another one is the fear of um, ramifications from the government and laws that have been put in order to silence um, all of us to telling the truth of what's happening with this, this huge, very, very powerful industry. So it's a combination of all these things. Okay, and in, in the film, we talk about how you lost a portion of your funding. Uh, Keegan, talk about some of this and some of the challenge that you faced while producing this documentary. Yeah, so in the film, we, we touch on the fact that our, our, one of our backers dropped out of the film because of fear of um, reprisal. You know, there are, as Kip just mentioned, a number of laws that have been created to criminalize dissent against animal agriculture. Um, but, you know, in the film, we would focus on just the one, but there was actually a number of investors and individuals who were interested in supporting the film who all backed out because of the controversy surrounding it. So the film was entirely self-produced, entirely self-funded from uh, AUM Films, which is a nonprofit organization that Kip Anderson created uh, in order to get this film off the ground. And how have some of those mainstream environmental organizations responded to your critiques of them in the film since it's been released and screened? Yeah, you know, um, there have been a number of organizations that have, you know, addressed the film. Um, they oftentimes, you know, provide pseudo solutions instead of advocating for a plant-based diet, which is really the most sustainable thing to do, the true solution. Uh, they advocate still for grass-fed beef and local boarism, uh, which really isn't a, a solution for 7.2 billion people. There have been positive responses, though. Rainforest Action Network, which is featured in the film, They've actually, since the release of the film, have uh, released a series of images on social media addressing animal agriculture. And we're thrilled to see that, and we want to encourage uh, them to continue that work and other organizations to continue to address the issue. Well, Kip, early, earlier you said that this part of your inspiration for doing this film was that, um, that you, were, you yourself were trying to do all that you could to try and reduce, I guess, your own environmental uh, footprint. Uh, but uh, one of the some of the common solutions that environmentalists put forward for dealing with this issue of animal agriculture is sustainable or organic farming. What do you think of these as solutions? Uh, the the word sustainable and animal agriculture just is an oxymoron. They can't go together. And this this industry and people, you know, essentially are addicted to you know animal flesh and secretions. They'll, they'll come up with these these uh, these new things: grass fed beef. Um, which ironically in that in grass-fed beef, it's actually more unsustainable in many reasons due to land use, due to species extinction. The reason why uh, the wolf population is at such decimated levels is because of, of grazing in public lands. It just takes way more land for grass-fed, pasture-raised beef to be uh, raised around 10 to 50 acres for just one cow, whereas in factory farm, it's only around two acres. So you're compensating, you know, the health and the well-being of a cow, but then you're you're, you're destroying all these other things, such as uh, river pollution, water pollution, species extinction, wild horses, um, all wildlife, and then supposedly a lot of studies show that methane is, methane is actually worse for grass-fed beef than it is in factory farms, and and it, and it goes on. Organic dairy farms, the same thing. We address that in the, the in the film. Um, it, it just doesn't go together. So what is the solution? The solution is really simple, and that's the thing. It doesn't take billions of dollars. Um, it doesn't even take take necessarily widespread, uh, um, you know, transformation with the legal system and our politics. Politics. It's basically just switching our diet, switching our diet to a plant based uh, lifestyle. It's the most powerful, by far, most powerful thing we can do, and it really needs to be addressed as the number one thing. It's not the only thing. 
it's just the very first thing that that everything else needs to stem from. It's the root. Okay, and did you get all the answers that you sought for sought in your film? Is there more that you too plan to investigate on this issue? Uh, what's investigating now is as a, as a film, as you see how the film ends, is, is going on that note of how this transformation has already begun. The tipping point of this new step in evolution where people are, the light has turned on, the new organizations that are coming uh, along, the new conscious capitalism of these, these uh, companies right here that are thriving beyond meat, beyond uh, egg, Hampton Creek. You know, Bill Gates and these uh, billionaires, they see the future in these, this industry. So that's where they're putting a lot of their money because they see the future in plant-based um, uh, uh, foods. And so this whole shift is already happening. You see it everywhere we go. We're traveling the world with this film, and everywhere you see it, the light turning on. So, so it's just really encouraging to see this transformation already have taken place. And Keegan, your take on the next step to bring this issue uh, to light. Yeah, absolutely. We just need to get this information out in front of as many people as possible. We really feel people can't make informed decisions unless they have the information. So that's what Cowspiracy is. It's a tool uh, to get this information to as many people as possible. Kip Anderson and Keegan Kuhn, co-producers of the new documentary film Cowspiracy. Thank you both for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.